All right. Hey, everyone. Welcome to the Inven Global Esports and Academia Summit. This is our first year doing it, so we're really excited to share a lot of knowledge and to share a lot of interesting subjects with you guys. Uh, today, we're going to be talking about esports business as a major and whether it is viable or not. We have two wonderful guests here with us, and I'm going to ask you guys to introduce yourselves. Sure, I'll go first. Um, Charles Palmer, faculty member at Harrisburg University. I'm the chair for both the interactive media program as well as the esports uh, management program. Uh, my name is Cody Elson. I'm the esports director and I also coach at Northwood University. Um, uh, a lot of experience in the esports industry and happy to be here. All right, everyone. So the first question would be, when did we start seeing an interest about esports business, an interest like high enough so we would have programs built around that? Could you want to go first or you want me? Uh, you can go first on this one. All right. Sure. So um, we have a really great varsity program. And that program got a lot of eyeballs on it, but it also had our institution thinking about, well, what are the other roles involved? And uh, as I went around and started talking to some of the places like uh, um, facilities owners, event tournament organizers, those type of individuals, many of them said very similar things. And something that Cody and I were talking about a little earlier, or the three of us, was that a number of these places were looking and saying that, hey, I can find really talented production people, but they don't know much about esports. And they would much rather have new employees that knew both sides of that. So as the businesses started realizing that they needed talented infrastructure that was knowledgeable about esports, that's really when we started seeing the rise of these types of programs, I would say. Yeah, very similar here. Um, I think a lot of it had to do with uh, the rise, for us, the rise of the value of the franchises and the, the franchise leagues and the advertising and all that stuff. Starting to see corporate dollars coming into the industry at a pretty high rate um, than, than before. Um, that was a big reason why we jumped in. And then uh, quite honestly, I, I don't want to call them horror stories, but some some stories we heard about, you know, people being hired and specific, specifically in com community management, com community engagement roles in the industry um, that didn't really, don't really understand esports and gaming. It's a, it's a very unique ecosystem. Um, and I think that's that was one of the, the tipping points for us was realizing that uh, you know the community itself is is worthy of its own degree and its own um, structure to train people and help people break into the industry versus uh, you know trying to like 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 uh, Charles was saying is trying to find these people that uh, yeah you know, they were super talented but they don't have any experience in esports um, so that was definitely when we decided to jump in. And some of those horror stories are on both sides, you know, companies yeah. not realizing what they were getting into. And yeah. then some of our, uh, you know, potential students taking on or being hired by some of these organizations that really didn't have their employees interests at hand. Right. So on both sides, there was a lot of education that needed to be done. And um, by by actually developing talented professionals to go out into the industry, they can say no to things when they know things aren't the way they should be. Right. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just to give a, a brief background, I went to school for game development around 2013. And at that time, it was still a very new program. I feel like it was so new that no one really knew which route it would take. I learned a little bit about everything, right? You learned from art to programming, to marketing your own game, to budgeting your own game. It's a whole lot. And when you graduate, you find out that, well, actually, you need to be a specialist in all, like, like each one of these things or one of these things, whichever you wish to, you know, follow through with a career in order to get a job, which is not really what you learn in college. And I'm curious about what your what a program like this would entail an esports business program what are students expected to learn anyone so can I'll, take it i'll start with ours first and then cody you can fill in it and so as and probably you guys did the exact same same thing is when you decide to make this jump into this space you look to see what your competitors are doing or other schools are doing mm -hmm. um you talk to some of the business owners and find out what their true needs are um when i talk to a bunch of other schools uh, I found out something really great about this space. It is huge. And because it's so huge, every school can come at it slightly uh, with their own unique spin on it, right? So 
um, uh, we've got really good friends down at Shenandoah that have a fantastic program. Well, they had a sports management program already. So when they move mm -hmm. into esports, they have some of the groundwork laid for um, uh, the competitive side of it, the coaching, as well as broadcasting and journalism. Okay, so that's great. Um, I come from a STEM university, so we're science and technology. So we approach it from a completely different uh, avenue, but it's at its core, it's still a business program. We're just applying those business tenets into the esports space, but we're lumping on top of that a lot of the technologies that we're involved with, um, a lot of the production skills, as well as we have a really big analytics program. So um, to answer your question, I honestly think there's enough room in this industry that different schools can come at it with their own specialization, what they do well, um, as opposed to not doing that. And so on an aside, um, I've been sort of reached out, a, a number of community colleges have reached out to me and said, hey, we're building this program and can you look at what we're doing? Um, and can we talk and meet about it? I'm always open to share what we're doing. Um, again, there's so much space in this industry that we all can play. But I found a number of schools that are approaching this for the wrong reasons, right? They're going for a quick money grab. They see right. esports in the news and want to sign up all the students that they can to get them in and get them out really quickly. And I, I, there's no shame for me telling them that, I'm sorry, no, this isn't a direction that you can go. Um, or them outlining something, I say, this is really great. Now, who's gonna teach it? You know, and they have no idea of that, that next step. And that's, that for me, is the first red flag. You know, the school really hasn't invested. So, um, and I, I joked with you guys earlier that I will talk to her forever. So, um, yeah, that, so Cody, that's you wanna cool. <laughs> pick up from there? Um, sure, yeah, so our program actually, uh, the way Charles described it with the Shenandoah and then, uh, you know, where Harrisburg's, you know, STEM related, we actually, um, we kind of took a hybrid of both. We actually looked at our MIS program um, mm -hmm. and our sports management programs we already had in existence. And uh, we, we kind of picked the best of both of those that pertained directly to job descriptions, current, you know, just interviewing people that are in esports roles. What do they have to do every day? What skills do they need? Um, so, it's you know a lot, a lot of event management very important um, online and in person um, performance management working with players we also do coaching management man managing players uh, then we also do focus a lot on you know specific stuff like um, working with esports organizations right how to make them happy how to manage them um, and community management again like I was uh, talking about earlier but um, I think probably the biggest uh, factor in ours is, you know, we kind of stuck to our roots and we have a pretty hefty amount of, um, you know, business courses in there, lots of finance, lots of management, accounting, stuff that you're going to have to do no matter where you work. And then we worked, worked in our sports management uh, with the MIS stuff. Luckily, um, Dr. Jacobs or Dr. Augustin um, has actually, before any of this, was, was already incorporated in esports because he's a big gamer, big esports fan over the last, you know, three or four years into the, the sports management program already, um, just okay. because it's, it, he felt it was big enough of an industry that it uh, it needed to be talked about in the sports management um, mm -hmm. field. We, we started having graduates from our sports management program going and working for companies. Like one of our graduates works for the company that produced all the CDL and Overwatch League stuff, right? Um, mm -hmm. So, well, like like Charles was saying, I mean, it just kind of just depends on um, the 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 core of the school and working from that. It's kind of like what I think all the schools that are going into it should do is you don't want to try to tear down everything that you're you you stand for as a school and what you've done. It's taking that and going, okay, these are our values, these are our ideals. How can we formulate that into a degree program and fit it into a, a portion of the esports industry? And I think that's what you're going to see most schools doing. Um, you know, you'll see a lot of uh, schools focus directly on production, which is great. I mean, they're all, the, the industry is so big that there's a little niche here and there, but then all these niches add up to like 25 niches and it's it's, it's going to be great. I'm super excited to see what other schools do too in the next year. But uh, um, yeah, definitely the core of the school is where I, I found most of the places and including us uh, have started building this out. <laughs> Oops, sorry about that. <laughs> That's okay. Cody, I would, I would just we like to... We have a third panelist, a everyone. Panelist. <laughs> Cody, I'd like to add... Sharing that... all she knows about esports. <laughs> oh, Cody, I'm so sorry. Cody, that's amazing that... Um, uh, that you guys have that your sports management program was so open 
yeah. because I've heard of many schools that aren't, that's not the case. You know, they're like, no, 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 you guys stay over there. We'll do what we're doing. We don't want to be tainted by you because we know what we're doing and we're doing it well. Exactly. Um, when we went out to start hiring faculty for our program, um, that was the biggest challenge is, mm -hmm. you know, finding the right talent. And uh, kudos to you guys for actually having someone in your sports management program that was that open because it's, yeah, it's not unique. You. He's Dr. Dr. Augustine is the chair of the sports management program. Okay. So basically what he decides, like, <laughs> so, um, but again, he, again, with everything going on, it was clear indication that the industry was growing and big enough that it needs to be taught even in sports yeah. management. Um, and then that just kind of slowly evolved um, as we went on. But luckily, you know, we have him and uh, a couple other professors that know the space because um, they've been fans of it for so long. Right. And then we're going to tie it into what they're doing already. That's great. Mm -hmm. All right, gentlemen, what would you say that are some of the most valuable skills that your students would be learning in these programs? I, I'll go, I'll, I'll go first if you want. Um, I think the biggest thing for me, um, the, like the biggest problem we're trying to address again is the, the community engagement piece. And the reason why I say that is, I wouldn't say the majority, but probably half of the esports companies every year are like startups because it's just growing and growing. There's a new startup, there's a new startup, and they're hiring people for this. And the biggest mistake you can make is not building a community or not engaging with the existing community correctly. Um, we all know what it's like. The esports community will can absolutely just destroy a company if you don't do things the right way. Like they will make it known. We are all pretty vocal about our opinions in the industry, whether they are good or bad. Nobody really holds mm -hmm. back. Um, so that's the biggest thing for me is that uh, and a lot of it evolves from the sports management side of things, but it's like the communications, the communicating, uh, the engagement aspect has been huge for that. And then second piece is the definitely the event management skills is huge, uh, production, broadcasting, because that's such a massive monetization part right now in the industry is if you have a totally. with your esports org at college or even you know at a high school level there's opportunities to monetize um your program and a lot of it revolves around production and casting and that kind of stuff so those are probably the two main things right now that i think they're definitely getting out of it and when you when you say casting sorry sorry charles no that's just good. a second we'll get to you would you mean that people would be learning how to actually cast, how how to present? Is that one of the things? Because to me, it's mind blowing that this will eventually be taught in schools. Yeah, so uh, we have a varsity uh, casting and production program on top of our varsity sports program. So we actually recruit on scholarship casters, Very production cool. people, analysts into the school. And obviously, pretty much every one of them is I mean, actually, everyone is in the esports management degree, right? So it's mm -hmm. not just about learning how to cast; it's about managing a team of casters, sitting there mm -hmm. and knowing like how to how to like help them, giving them the tools to succeed. I mean, the worst thing you can do is have a broadcast and have no plan, no background, nothing. It's not up to the caster to do all of the homework all the time. And I think totally, that's the biggest, yeah. the biggest thing that uh, um, that we're teaching our you know or the people in the program just, you know, you have to do your research and you have to have a plan. You have to be able to be able to divert and do this and do that. Um, we do have a, a fair amount of people that uh, do come here because they want to learn how to cast and that's something that they want to do. And, you know, whether it's the, all the esports games, because we have 11 varsity teams right now, they're working with them or, I mean, we'll, sh we'll throw them into the football stadium and be like, Hey, yeah. You're gonna you're gonna cast this live on our website. You're gonna you're gonna announce announce this game. Go put it in the basketball arena. I mean, uh, obviously it's a little bit different than esports, but it, there's so many ways to mold um, from the casting side. But yeah, so they're learning both. Um, some people want to learn like the more managing side of things with the casters, right. and some people actually want to cast. Um, there's opportunities definitely for both. All right, Charles, back to no, you. No, that's uh, that's Cody. That was amazing. Um, yeah, those are some really big things. Um, I think on our side, I, if I had to pick two things, um, one, I would echo what Cody said on the management side of things. I think um, students who are going out into the job world, they need to understand more than just their talents and their skills and how to apply those. They need to understand how a business operates. And in, some, in an industry that is so young, they need to understand what is right from wrong very quickly. And so they, they don't get into bad contracts, um, so they aren't taken advantage of. Um, uh, aside from the university, actually on the leadership team of a, of a professional organization. 
And I'm amazed at the number of times I sit down with the general manager and we hear horror stories of what's happening in some other organizations. Um, it's gotten to the fact, uh, so I work for the Susquehanna Sonics. And so mm -hmm. it's gotten to the fact that Darren our, Moore, our general manager is extremely open about what's going on in the industry. And he is constantly, I've seen the emails, constantly getting approached by players on other organizations saying, hey, I don't think this is right. Should I, how should I? I mean, and so the industry needs more educated people inside of this space to recognize Absolutely. when something isn't right, as opposed to, you know, a 19 year old who just gets a job with their, their dream team, right? Their dream organization. Mm -hmm. And they come in so excited. They are willing to do anything. And there are yeah. some orgs that are taking advantage of that. Right. And so um, we really push hard um, in the four years that the students are here at Harrisburg University, um, they will have four management related courses about uh, how organizations are run from various components. We actually have a organizational behavior course that is a gen ed for the entire university, but it's a requirement for the esports students as well. And so that's one side of it. The other side is, is a class that I'm actually extremely proud of. Uh, it's running for the first time this semester and it is called Contemporary Issues in Esports. And what we decided to do, similar on the business case that I was just describing, is we wanted to find out what's wrong with the industry right now, right? And let's, let's, re let's fix those things by talking about them in an open and safe space so that again, when our students leave us, hopefully they become decision makers and they take a different approach. And to deliver that content, what we've done is we've brought in a lot of guest speakers. Right, so people from various segments of the industry, and I pretty much pitched the same thing to all of them. Come in and talk about the biggest problem you see in esports, and let's mm -hmm. figure out how we can solve it or idealize it, right, to start coming to a solution. And um, again, we're only in our third week of the semester, but uh, it's it's working out pretty well. So, so to Cody's point, this whole idea of communication that's huge, and so we want to see it both on the business side, but we also want our students to recognize. Um, what toxicity looks like, why the industry really needs to be diverse, um, how we should treat women, uh, you know, a variety of things uh, that we really need to focus on. And not just, uh, oh, I read, um, I read a Twitter long, a tweet long, and I heard this horrible story, but no, let's sit down and cognitively walk through the entire process and really think about it and then think, well, what should have happened? Or um, if this comes up in my lifetime, those students, um, how would I like to be addressed or how would I like to see change happen? That sounds wonderful. You touched on on the subject of of the 19 year old excited like <laughs> kid that that works in esports out of pure passion and ends up being taken advantage of. And that is honestly so common. I was once that kid. Um, I started working in esports. I was 21. Definitely way too excited out of my mind. And one thing that I found out that was rather common among people my age or, or even older is that um, they go into esports and they, they start working these full-time jobs, these jobs that sometimes are way more than eight hours a day, and they end right. up not having time for school or, um, you know, they, they make it to hire positions without you know like the the proper educational background and it's it's even like a normal thing in esports to be proud of that and i wanted to ask you guys what do you think that this is going to do to the industry or what your thoughts on these statements are in general now that you know we have programs that can pro probably build you know more i don't know, more skilled professionals i would say I think we're going to see a little lag time for the next year or two years or so while we educate an entirely new generation of mm -hmm. esports professionals. Um, but we are seeing some of the businesses look deeper um, to find people with better credentials. And so, as we mentioned, they're going out and finding different places. There are a number of places online where people are now just going to get certification in a very narrow space, right? And I'm, I'm honestly not against that at all. Um, I think when you do that if you have a different profession. So we were going to launch a graduate program. We're actually backing off of launching the graduate program and instead doing some certifications. So when you talk about a journalist who wants to get into esports, they don't need a full master's degree, right? They already are a master in one domain. They need a primer on esports or what the careers are or how they could focus. And so I honestly think what's going to happen for us next January is we'll roll out a series of certificate programs first 
and then those will grow up into a master's or, or a master's degree, which is sort of like an MBA-ish master's in the space. Um, uh, uh, yeah, it's communication and education, right? It's it's making sure because that what you mentioned there happens way too often. Um, I've seen the emails, I've seen the students or the the players or even other employees saying, "Hey, here's my contract." Um, and we're like, well, you agreed to work for free. They're like, I was just so excited. We're like, don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> Hold Ever. on. You know, there are people who are out there who will pay you for your skills, you know? Mm -hmm. and, and so I, I just, I hate to see it. And, and we call out on Twitter, we call out those companies every single time we see it. Yeah, we definitely, I mean, I, I've been working with uh, contracts in esports since 2016, being the one writing contracts and giving them to players. So I know quite a bit about it. Um, and even now, like we, my, so I'm, I'm lucky that I've got, I think 17 players that would be considered professionals in the games they play right now at Northwood. And I look through contracts for them all the time when they get sent. And I am shocked to see some of the stuff in there that these pr pretty notable esports organizations and yes. esports agencies are trying to do to these kids that are 18, 19, 20. I'm like, I mean, it blows my mind. So I think, I think we'll, eventually we'll, there'll be some sort of a standardization with contracts um you'll start yeah. seeing um more and more leagues and games that franchise there's more of a guideline and requirements from the game themselves so that'll help stabilize a little bit but then in terms of like uh you're talking about lag time with the uh, developing skills and stuff i actually think that you're going to see the next two years of, e of interns throughout the country from programs like ours harrisburg shenandoah um, I think UTD is the other one I was then thinking of that's communication with communications. I think you're going to see them actually more so shape what employers are looking for in a way too, is, uh, if we're, if we start to do a good enough job initially in the freshman and sophomore, maybe even junior year of developing skills and we send an intern to, you know, whether it is, you know, Twitch or some giant company, right. You know, if we're doing a good job and they're impressed, that is going to start building that relationship by default with that company, with helping our students obtain these careers, right? Um, so I, I think I think it's gonna take, you know, a year or two, probably three years-ish to really see uh, where, where things are going. Um, and I'm also somebody that, uh, I'm, I don't know if Charles agrees with me on this. I think uh, you kind of alluded to most, a lot of schools will go into this. I actually think the esports industry is better not having every college in the country with an esports degree. I don't think the industry is that massive, but yeah. I think every state should definitely have their hub of two to three schools with a good bachelor's program because there's need for it. So as long as this, as long as the um, ecosystem doesn't get flooded, I think we'll be okay. Um, and yeah. I think all, all these schools will be successful, but we, we just can't have every single person doing it. And I think, uh, I think certifications are great. And I, I, I'm, I'm also not opposed to them at all either. Um, I think it's a great alternative to somebody going through a four-year program um, if they already have a bachelor's degree potentially in something already and they're trying to get in the industry. There's a lot of, you know, I four, am that person. <laughs> four to eight, there's like four, four to eight courses type certificates or even like good seminars for, you know, a yeah. couple of weeks that are on and off that do a great job. Um, but I think, again, I think the core is that bachelor's degree we're going to start seeing, uh, a lot of, uh, well, I think we're gonna end up doing one, believe it or not, shaping the industry. I really do, uh, the schools that have it. That sounds yeah. good. All yeah. right, so we're going to move to, uh, to the questions right now. Peter Lamb wrote, how can we make sure that esports majors or even minors can have a tangible impact in helping students be successful in their careers after graduation? Um, so, I have a short answer and a long answer. Um, I'll give you the one in the middle. So back in back when uh, Laura, when you were going to school, right? And right. roughly, it started in two thousand and eight. The games industry got together and said, "Well, what should a games program look like?" Right? Mm -hmm. Because they were popping up all over the place. You were seeing them on, you know, one a.m. There'd be these horrible commercials about, "I'm going to level up the gra I'm going to level up the graphics on," <laughs> you know, and just like, "What are you talking about?" Um, so a framework was developed by uh, some of the leading colleges to sort of say, what should this program look like? Um, right now, there are a handful of universities that are doing that right now in esports as well. So it's 
it is still the Wild West when you look on the academic side right now of what schools are doing. But because there are so few of us right now, um, uh, the spotlight is on them. And so with that spotlight, we actually are all trying to do a really good job and make sure our students are prepared for a career. Now, the downside is that normally when you're evaluating a college or an academic program, you're saying, well, how many, uh, how many students are in the job field doing the work? Well, we're all too young to have, you know, we haven't been around for five years in order to have a class of students out there. So what do you look for? Um, you look for the types of courses that are available and you want to find out, are they all courses in the major or are they just some hodgepodge of courses brought together in one or two esports courses? Um, you want to look at students who are getting internships. I guarantee any school out there that has a, a reputable esports program, even if they only have freshmen in their program, those freshmen are getting offers of internships. Um, we started our program uh, last this past January. Um, I have already had four students get internships. Um, after having one semester in the program because there's such a need. Mm -hmm. So we can't put up the numbers in the jobs, but we can mm -hmm. look at the feasibility and the internships uh, that are coming out. So if someone is looking for ways of, of finding out if a school is a school that they want to consider, I would look at those things. And then lastly, just look at their varsity program as well. Yeah. Um, how well are their varsity teams doing? Uh, are they recruiting? Are they giving scholarships? Is there any connection between the varsity? This is what uh, this is the thing that Harrisburg doesn't do well that I'm hoping to change in the future. But is there a connection between the varsity program and the esports club? Um, right now, there's not a strong connection. And I, I have to say, it's almost like the jocks on the football team. You know, it's the <laughs> it's the the collegiate, it's, it's the varsity and the junior J JV teams, right? And so um, at our program, we're really looking at, well, how do we integrate those a little better? So those are some of just a couple of tips that I would say um, that someone should look for. All righty. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty similar with that. Um, I again, like our the, for us, it was like going back to the core of what Northwood does well is um, you know our job placement rate after graduation within six months is you know not 100 percent, but almost there. Um, we do a good job of we make internships required um, to complete your degree. So most That's of our yeah, most, most, and a lot of colleges do that now. Most of our, you know, students at least have two internships, but that's the, so one of the first things I've done is I've just been setting up internship paths for our kids in the program because it, that's the biggest way to do it. And then we also, um, we have analysts, student coaches, we have assistant coaches, we have social media managers, we have esports coordinators, we have we have like 11 different roles that are available for our esports majors to actually get involved in the program and work with our varsity team, which has 62 players on it and then help with our club team as well. So that's like the biggest thing for us is like, whether, whether they're getting this internship and flying out to California or not, every single year they're working with our varsity program in some sort of different role. We try to rotate the roles, right? So if you're, you're helping us with social media one year, you might be, uh, you might be, you might be like a, a team manager or and handling uh, content, stream schedule, scrims, everything for the Overwatch team, right? So I think it just depends on. Um, I just think it just depends on where the school's set up. To me, to to me, I would hesitate. I would hesitate. Like if I was a student, what was what we thought was if a school didn't have a a close to a top tier varsity sports program and wasn't investing in the competitive size, what makes, what would make me think that I'd feel comfortable with my educational aspect? Everything's gotta be kind of treated to a high level um, around, around surrounding the industry. Um, kind of something we found very similar with sports management programs, which was a lot of the, the facilities for like a football team, for example, are really high quality and awesome. Um, and that had sports management programs, right? But some of them would also have sports management programs and they put nothing into the athletic side and they would have almost nobody in their programs. Um, so it's an association of quality um, for sure is a big part of it as well. Thank you so much, Cody. Guys, this is it for us. It was a short panel and I saw a lot of really good questions in chat. Um, I suggest that maybe you guys can do some networking with the panelists if they are available. Sorry to put you guys on the spot. <laughs> <Bye>. <laughs>
but they are legitimately really good questions that I wish we had time to answer all of them. Thank you guys so much for participating in the panel today. It was wonderful. It was super insightful and it made me a little bit nostalgic. I wish I could go back to uh, to getting my, my bachelor's and it would definitely be in esports at this point. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Is there anything you'd like to say to the audience? Thanks for watching. Appreciate no, thanks for watching. Follow us on Twitch. <laughs> Reach oh, out yes. and see anything.